I'd like to think of myself as a pretty tough guy, you know? Not a lot can make my urine turn yellow, make me sweat a little bit in my sleep, if you will. But ever since I've come across the first adaption of the Burglar of Ham, I just can't sleep the same anymore. Thinking that he could be anywhere, at any time, just trying to snatch my sweet sesame seed buns right out from underneath me. And right between these buns are pickles, crisp shredded lettuce, finely chopped onions, and a slice of American cheese containing no artificial flavors or added colors from any artificial sources. What I'm describing to you now in immense detail, can you picture it? Is a Big Mac. Why, you may ask? Um, I, I really don't have any clue. Um, I've kind of lost all focus. What was I talking about again? Well, anyways, just four short years after the secret Big Mac sauce would grace the world's tongue in 1967, well, 1968, if you really want to be specific, a Mick Menace would be released from prison. A Mick prison, if you will, or maybe even Mick Hell, because this dude right here is absolutely terrifying. You're staring at the very first Hamburglar, or rather he's staring at you right into your soul. He's touching it. He's touching you. He knows what kind of buns you're hiding and he wants them. Or at least these have been my thoughts after seeing the happy-go-lucky bozo Ronald McDonald's arch enemy in his first form. And not that Ronald's first form was without flaws either though. I mean, get a load of this guy. Anyways, crazy enough, Willard Scott actually played the first Ronald McDonald. He also played Bozo the Clown right before taking on his short-lived role with Ronald McDonald in 1963. That's just random, I just wanted to share that. Anyways, he wouldn't be the Ronald taking on the Hamburglar anyhow. Good old Ronald McDonald had to evolve himself in order to take on such a gibberish speaking foe such as the Hamburglar. Which, by the time that Ronald would come face to face with the Hamburglar, he kind of just looked like regular old Ronald that we know today. And of course, you better believe he was ready to smack up Hamilton B. Urgler. That's a Hamburglar's government name right there. I didn't mean to, you know, give that one out, but there you have it. And now I'll just share a little bit of background information about that Patty Napper. He was created by Needham, Harper, and Shears, which is now known as DDB Worldwide. He and the rest of the little weirdos over in McDonald's land were all created as just a marketing gimmick to promote their play areas and copious amounts of bacteria that, in, that are involved in there. It really is quite simple, isn't it? The, you know, the McDonald's dream is not going to sell itself. They need some sort of marketing weirdos. And let me tell you what, these were the weirdest weirdos that you could have thought of in the first place. But, you know, they worked, didn't they? Now, we got to get back to the weirdest weirdo of all, Mr. Hamburglar himself. He was also known as the lone jogger for some reason and loved to always flash what was ever under his cape. Quite a creeper. He went from a gray-haired, creepy old dude in 1971 to the ginger dweeb that we all know today in 1986. And there were also two different iterations in between, being this one in 1973, still a creepy big nose weirdo, and then in 1975, decreepifying him just a tad. Now he's back in 2024, which hasn't changed much from 1986. So, so you know, what's really the point of this video anyhow? I mean, I guess to get this version of the burger felon to stop haunting my sleep. And the only way to do that was to make a rant about him. I offer nothing insightful in return. I, I just don't know how after 53 years this menace is still on the loose. The Patty Patrol Force has to get their shit together. I mean, come on, seriously. Really, this video has no importance. I mean, but if anybody from McDonald's corporate is listening, I mean, bring back Mac tonight, please. I think you know what we all want. We want late night McDonald's trips and to look up at the skies with old Mac in our hearts. You know, it's better than having that mascot that promotes theft of precious McDonald's hamburgers. What would that teach the youth, you know? You know it's better for them? Adding a supersizing menu again. That, that That's what the world's been missing. Let's promote some better he healthy eating habits. Let's, let's do that. Gosh, I really sound like a Rick and Morty extra, don't I? All right, I was just talking. I don't know why I brought up this, this whole supersizing menu. I, I don't want that back. Nobody needs that back. We don't need that, okay? Regardless, I have no idea what I'm talking about at this point. Just rambling about that old ham snatcher. Moral of the story, that burger perpetrator was creepy and I'm uh, overcoming knowing this. I hope you can too. I wouldn't mind seeing him though make a comeback in 2024 in this very form. You know, like a 2024 meets 1971 situation. Maybe add the 1973 one and along with the 1975, like a McMultiverse or something. You know what I'm saying? That'd be kind of cool. I say we give it a shot, eh, McDonald's? Have your people call my people. I know a guy who could portray him just perfectly and kill it. You know, let's 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 get to work on it. I'll get to work for now though. Bye bye